The last point that I want to talk about relating to chapter one of the book uh, is some common objections to multi-agent systems. That uh, is some standard questions that you get when presenting these kind of ideas to people either in computer science or from other, uh, other disciplines. Um, so the first question that you get is, um, isn't this thing that you're doing, isn't what you're doing when you talk about multi-agent systems, isn't it just a distributed system? Well, multi-agent systems by their nature are distributed or concurrent systems. You have a bunch of processing nodes and they communicate by exchanging messages over some kind of communication infrastructure or some data network or similar. But viewing a uh, multi-agent system as a distributed system is really missing the point completely for the following reason. Let's take an example. We'll take the example of eBay. Now on eBay, uh, which is very like a multi-agent system, except that the, the participants in eBay are people, uh, you've got people buying and selling things. And typically the buyer wants the lowest price possible and the seller wants the highest price possible. Now you could view eBay as a distributed system. You could start to think about all the classic distributed system questions like does, does my eBay protocol ensure that there is no deadlock and no live lock and all these kinds of things that you want to ensure about distributed systems, but you're really missing the point. The point about eBay is that the seller is trying to get a low price and the buyer is trying to get a high price. So there are strategic considerations there. And if you want to understand why so many of the things happen on eBay that do happen, you have to look at those and understand those strategic considerations. So a classic behaviour on eBay is what's called sniping. So if you've ever done an eBay auction, let's say it's, it's over a week, you're auctioning some item, let's say a second-hand laptop, uh, and you allow a week for the eBay auction, then you see that nothing happens, and nothing happens, and nothing happens, and you think, nobody's going to buy my laptop. And then all of a sudden, at the last minute possible, there's a flurry of activity where people try and submit the last bid possible. And that behaviour is called sniping. A distributed systems analysis of eBay is not going to predict that behaviour. It's not going to tell, it, tell you that it happens. It happens because people are trying to get the best deal possible for themselves and they're acting strategically to get that deal. Okay? So in order to understand systems like eBay and so on, okay, and there are many, many systems in the world like eBay today that have this characteristic of having entities engaged in the system with their own goals, their own agenda, that are trying to achieve the best for themselves and behaving strategically to do that, you need to start thinking about what those goals are and issues like the strategic behaviour of the participants in order to understand it. So in summary, multi-agent systems, yes there are ideas from distributed and concurrent systems there, but what's different is we take into account the fact that these are the participants in the distributed system are self-interest. They're trying to get the best outcome for themselves. Question number two, isn't it all just AI? Isn't this something which AI has been studying for decades? Well, certainly you could take the view that artificial intelligence is all about constructing agents. Okay? You can think of, in the classic Turing test, you could think about the participant, the, the, the entity who's being tested for being a, a person or a computer, you can think about that as being an agent. But really, AI has proceeded to break intelligence down into its components, things like learning and problem solving and perception, breaking the overall AI problem down into these component entities. In multi-agent systems, in autonomous agents and multi-agent systems, we're interested in synthesizing those, those capabilities into building complete agents, complete decision makers that can act on their own. Uh, so, no, it's not quite uh, AI, it's not quite the classic AI project. We're not interested typically in the components of intelligence, but in putting them together into making individual agents. So, isn't it all economics or game theory? So, game theory is the, the mathematical part of economics which studies interactions between self-interested entities. Well, so it certainly sounds like multi-agent systems. They're interested in strategic considerations. They're interested in how self-interested entities interact. But what we bring in multi-agent systems, which is different, is the idea that these entities are uh, information processing, computational entities with finite memory, finite processing capabilities that have to make decisions in finite time. And this brings a whole new slant onto economics or game theory, because many of the solutions 
that have been developed and proposed within economics and game theory completely ignore computational considerations. So to put it another way, a lot of what's called the solution concepts that are proposed in game theory were developed in complete ignorance of uh, uh, ideas like computational complexity. And it turns out, if you try to automate those solutions, if you try to write programs that figure out the solutions that are proposed within economics or game theory, it just doesn't work because they're computationally too hard. So no, it's different to economics and game theory because we bring this idea that the entities are computational entities with limited computational resources. Okay, that brings a completely different slant onto economics and game theory. Interestingly, uh, it's, it's one of the founders of the, the um, computing discipline was John von Neumann, who also, uh, by historical accident, was also one of the founders of the game theory discipline. So it's interesting to see these two disciplines come back together again after 60 years or so. Okay, and then finally, isn't it all just the social sciences? Well, the social sciences try to understand societies of humans, how and why societies of humans behave the way they do. Okay, So they develop all sorts of theories uh, and uh, models which try to predict and understand how human societies work. Well, again, we can take inspiration from those models, uh, but what we're building is something quite different. We don't need to be bound by the models that operate in human societies. We, can, we, can, uh, we have to take cognizance of the fact that the entities that we're building are information processing computational entities. Uh, and that gives a rather different twist to the classic social sciences view, where you're trying to understand a society that's actually out there already. So again, the main difference is what we're talking about are computational entities here. We're not talking about human societies, we're talking about computational entities.